It was the worst video I ever made. People thought it was obnoxious, insensitive, and just inappropriate. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, Mike Molnar here. I'm an internal medicine doctor from Los Angeles, California, and I've made hundreds of health science related videos, but there's one in particular that I'm really embarrassed of. And with no further ado, uh, let's just watch the video. Now what's this I hear about 25,000 feet? I want this plane at 30,000 feet. And these ailerons, all wrong. They need to be six degrees to the left. Okay, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to tell your pilot how to fly the plane. And it probably doesn't make much sense to tell your doctor how to diagnose and treat disease. Now you listen to me, I want an MRI scan and I want it now. And what's this I hear about NSAID medications? I never approved a trial of NSAIDs. Who said anything about NSAID therapy? Okay, so you can see the premise of the video. I'm basically saying you wouldn't tell a pilot how to fly a plane, so why would anybody tell a doctor how to diagnose and treat disease? When I made this video, it was supposed to be a joke. I mean, I was using the stupid green screen. It was actually the first time I'd ever used a green screen, uh, but also I was talking in this like 1920s fast talking accent. I thought people wouldn't really take it seriously, that they would, they would just kind of get a quick laugh out of it and go about their day. But that is not what happened. The video went viral on TikTok. It had, I think, over 100,000 views within just a couple days. And there were hundreds of comments uh, just trashing the video, saying, number one, it was stupid, it was obnoxious, uh, but worse yet, that I was basically making doctors look like arrogant jerks who don't listen to anyone's opinion but their own. Um, and then even worse yet, that I was making it seem like doctors don't listen to patients. Like if you go to a doctor with a real concern, let's say you want an MRI scan, the doctor's just gonna blow you off as, as being you know beneath him. And when I saw these comments, I was just mortified. I mean, you know, my presence on social media, what I want to do on social media is uh, to be uplifting, to provide vid videos that are educational, that you know, hopefully make people smile. I didn't want to make a video that seems condescending like this. And this definitely was not my intention. And it, it even got so bad that people went online and wrote fake reviews of me as a physician. If you Google me, you'll see all the, you know, I, th I think there's still one that's a, like a one-star review saying, oh, this guy might makes terrible TikToks. But I wanted to talk about this video today because I think it's something that we can all learn from, uh, certainly including myself. Uh, so we'll break it down. So the first um, criticism of the video is that I make it seem like doctors are arrogant, that it's it's their way or the highway. It's like, look at me, I got a stethoscope around my neck. I know best, you know, don't, you know, I don't care about what anybody thinks. And I'll tell you, arrogance, hubris uh, is probably one of the most toxic traits a physician can have because no matter how long you've been practicing medicine there's always going to be curveballs that are going to come your way just when you think you've seen every possible way that a heart attack can present itself for example you'll get surprised you may see somebody who is coming in with very atypical symptoms like one time i had someone coming in with uh, to the hospital with nausea no chest pain no history of any cardiac illness but it ended up being a STEMI, uh, the worst type of heart attack and you know somebody who maybe is has a little bit of hubris going on saying oh i know all about heart attacks i'll never miss anything you know we don't have to get an ekg trust me i know best that physician could very easily miss something serious and so i think that's that's why hubris or arrogance is one of the most dangerous traits a physician can have now the next comment a lot of people had is that the video makes it seem like if you go to see your doctor your doctor is not going to listen to you you can come in with back pain the doctor won't take it seriously let's say you suggest a diagnostic test like an mri scan the doctor will just blow you off now honestly nothing can be further from the truth listening i would argue is the most important skill a physician can have because when somebody's coming in with a specific complaint all the details about that concern really matter for example if you see somebody in the hospital coming in with chest pain and it's kind of a burning sensation that happens after eating a big greasy cheeseburger uh, that's going to be very different from somebody coming in with chest pain that's a deep chest pressure like an elephant sitting on the chest radiating to the jaw happening during exertion or when climbing a flight of stairs uh, the first one is more likely to be acid reflux the second one more likely a heart attack and if you're not a good listener you won't pick up the nuances that separate one type of chest pain from another and the same is true for any other um, physical complaints you know it could be fainting 
there also it really matters. Was the fainting because of dizziness or was it more of a lightheadedness sensation? Being a really good listener uh, can really help to make the diagnosis. And all this brings me to the one thing I really want to emphasize in this video, and that is when you go to see your doctor, there's not just one expert in the room, right? It's not just some doctor who's supposedly all-knowing and then um, the patient who's not going to be listened to. Not at all. There's uh, actually two experts in the room. There's the doctor who's the expert at maybe the science behind the medical condition, but there's the patient who is the expert at his or her own body. After all, the patient has a lifetime of experience living inside this body and can tell if something doesn't feel quite right. And so ultimately the process of making a diagnosis and forming a treatment plan is a collaborative effort between two experts the doctor, and the patient. All right, thank you so much for joining me in this video. Uh, this one was a tough video to make because I am really embarrassed about that video I made earlier. Um, it did not go over well, and I'm sorry if anyone felt like it was condescending. I've definitely learned a lot from it as a content creator and will be more careful uh, about the topics that I choose to cover in the future. So until next time, I will see you guys later. And I'm going to ditch the dumb accent and green screen. That I can promise you.